kill everybody pretty quickly. Meanwhile, Earth is being stretched to its breaking point. They would be stretching the Earth in opposite directions, and it would be like that famous business of tying horses to the four limbs of someone, tearing them apart. Will the stretched out planet forever link the black holes? Or will it snap in half? On the list of 10 ways to destroy the Earth, number six finds the planet in very bad shape, torn between two black holes. It's a gravitational tug of war, with Earth as a rope that can't withstand the strain. You would have a case of extreme spaghettification. Earth would be pulled in each direction, stretched in two directions toward both black holes, and eventually ripped apart. And then those pieces would get ripped apart. And those pieces would get ripped apart. After the last spaghetti strands of Earth are violently sucked into the event horizons, the two black holes will be bookends on the empty shelf where Earth once stood. It's comforting to know that the odds of being stretched between two black holes are slim to none. But physicist and science fiction author Travis Taylor, who's written several books on real and imaginary threats from outer space, has another idea involving destructive black holes. If I wanted to destroy the Earth, my favorite is that we trap a black hole in the core and, and eat the Earth away, so I, I would like to be on a spaceship way away to watch it collapse on itself. And that's the number five way to destroy the Earth, devoured from within. A stellar mass black hole would do the job quickly. But there are other intriguing possibilities. So what else can we think of? Well, maybe the black hole is the size of my earring. A black hole that size would have the same mass as the Earth itself. Let's take the miniature black hole and drop it through the North Pole. Assume the speed and angle are just right to have it end up rotating in the center of the Earth. Right away, we'd know something was very wrong. If you have somehow managed to get an Earth mass black hole at the center of the Earth, then on the surface of the Earth, we would suddenly feel twice the effect of gravity. All of a sudden, a ball would drop much faster. All of us are going to start hunching down. While all living things struggle helplessly, the miniature black hole is sucking in matter. The more it eats, the closer Earth comes to doomsday. As it's pulling the material in, all the material above it is going to be collapsing. So we will be having enormously massive earthquakes going on, shifts in the crust. There'll be new volcanoes because new places where the magma can pop out or would appear due to this black hole. So one can imagine all kinds of exciting scenarios. After months of increasing cataclysms, the finale will take less than an hour. The Earth will start to collapse on itself, and then that part would be eaten by the black hole too. Perhaps the Himalayas will be the last place on Earth to survive before they too fall through the event horizon to disappear forever. If you were up in a spaceship and watching it, it would probably look like you took an eggshell and somehow crushed it from the inside out. If you could attach a string at every point to the inside of the eggshell and yank it all at once, then you'd see it just immediately collapse on itself. So. 
all that would remain is the black hole. The mass of the Earth would just exist now inside that black hole. No one has ever found an Earth-mass black hole. Normal black holes only form from the supernova death of stars that were at least 10 times more massive than the Sun. But black holes with a million times less mass might be out in the universe. According to one hypothesis, shortly after the Big Bang, there was so much matter packed so densely together that millions of miniature so-called primordial black holes could have been formed without the need of dying stars. We don't know of the existence of such black holes, but they could exist and they could devour the Earth. Probably we don't want to go and find one of these just to try it out. But could we create a mini black hole right here on Earth? Perhaps with a particle accelerator like the Large Hadron Collider in Europe? That's what Justin L. from Salt Lake City, Utah wanted to ask the universe. So he texted us. Can a super collider cause a black hole? Justin, great question. A lot of physicists would like to know whether the Large Hadron Collider will produce many black holes. In principle, it can if it compresses a lot of material into a sufficiently small volume, then it'll produce a black hole. But don't worry, such black holes will quickly evaporate and they won't devour the Earth. In space, the destructive power of black holes comes from their irresistible gravity. But a lack of gravity could be even more dangerous for the Earth. That's what intrigues astronomer Alex Felipenko whose groundbreaking studies of dark energy and the acceleration of the universe have inspired his own vision of doom. Perhaps my favorite way to destroy the Earth is through a disruption of what we call gravity. And that's the number four way to destroy the Earth. Turn off the gravity. Everything we do depends on a balanced relationship with gravity. But what if gravity decided to end the relationship? Without gravity, what goes up will never come down. Airplanes will never land. Trees are rooted to the ground until the ground comes apart. And all that is just a warm-up for the real disaster to come. Earth itself would begin to break apart, piece by piece. It seems impossible. But could gravity really be switched off? Incredibly, the answer is possibly. In the future, gravity may cease to exist. Of the 10 ways to destroy the Earth cooked up by astronomers and astrophysicists, one of the most incredible is number four, turn off the gravity. Today, gravity is one of four basic forces. Along with electromagnetism, the strong nuclear force that holds atomic nuclei together, and the weak nuclear force that's the source of radioactivity. But at the time of the Big Bang, instead of four fundamental forces, there may have only been two. When the universe was a tiny fraction of a second old, the strong nuclear force was unified with what's called the electroweak force, an amalgam of electromagnetism and the weak nuclear force. That united superforce may have created a super energy that could have caused an almost instantaneous expansion of the universe called inflation. It became monstrously big in a very short amount of time. But in a minuscule fraction of a second after the Big Bang, inflation stopped as the forces broke up.